Hi, welcome to part three of the Introduction to Deep Learning with Bifrost tutorial series. In this part, we're going to use the data we generated in the previous tutorial to train our neural network with PyTorch, and then we're going to run our trained model back in Maya on our Bifrost rig. If we launch the Bifrost browser and go into the Generate Data Sample Graph, you'll actually see we included the training code here. It's quite short. A lot of this is just very boilerplate PyTorch. Uh, if you're not familiar with PyTorch, it's one of the most popular machine learning, deep learning frameworks that uses Python for training and inference. So we'll be using PyTorch today. And so we can actually just copy and paste this into our Python ID of choice, and it should should run right off the bat. You can, do, you can do this in a lot of different places. You can do a Jupyter Notebook, um, whatnot. I'll be showing you how to do this in PyCharm, which is my, my ID of choice. Uh, so in PyCharm, if I go to File, New Project, I'm going to navigate to the uh, directory we set up to save our training data set, uh, Biff DL Tutorial. Open that, and this is going to automatically set up a virtual environment. That's a standalone little Python environment where we can install different packages we might need, like PyTorch. So I'll hit Create, Create from existing sources. So you see we have our, our, our data folder, our NumPy files that contain our input and output features that we saved, and then it's also added a, a virtual environment. So the first thing I'll do is actually set up just a new directory that we'll call models, which are where we're going to save our training data, so our, say, our model weights and biases. And then inside that, we'll match our, our data directory, call this v1, so we can keep those paired. And then really the only thing we need to do is install PyTorch. So if you go to the, the PyTorch website here, you can use their, their little start locally guide to get the right install command. I'm on a Mac using pip. I'll use this pip command here. Back in PyTorch in a local terminal here. I can paste that. And then if I do a pip list here, it'll show all the packages that are now in this, this virtual environment that we created. So you see things like NumPy and Torch itself so, and a lot of different um, libraries that PyTorch uses. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is just create a new Python file. Call this train. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go back to our sample graph and copy all of our code that we have in there that we've included. Paste that. Delete these three tick marks here. That was just for that sticky note to format it properly. Same with up here. Delete those. So this is it. This is the training code. It's uh, 100 and 127 lines long. Again, a lot of this is very boilerplate. PyTorch, you could actually use the same exact code to train on completely different data sets. So uh, I'll just walk through this super quickly. This top will just check if you have a GPU enabled or it'll default to CPU for training. Import, import some modules we need. There's some code to normalize the inputs and outputs of the data set that helps the network learn when it gets things closer to between you know, zero and one, especially if you have input data that varies wildly in scale. So you have, might have some features that are between zero and one and some that are between minus a thousand and plus a thousand. This kind of puts normalizes everything nicely for the network to learn. We have some code to load our data here I've hard-coded the name of our input features file. So if you do change the, the name when you export from Bifrost, just remember to, to change those here. And then we have the network definition itself. So this is, this is the network. It's four, uh, in this case, four layers, linear layers. This is basically corresponds to that, that opening diagram I showed you with the input layer, the hit, four hidden layers, and an output layer. And then this forward here is defining what actually happens as you pass data through the network. So this, if you'll recognize, is that that one equation I showed you. So the linear layer basically does that weighted sum multiplication, adds the bias term, and then applies an activation to it. The output of layer one then goes into the input of layer two, and so on. 
In this case, we're using a ReLU activation function, which is super common. In general, the number of layers we have here, the activation function, are all different terms we can play around with. But generally, like you'll you'll find you can just pick pick something, and and then it'll get you pretty close. And then you can experiment and kind of kind of fine tune that. Same with hidden hidden size here is how many neurons each layer has. So these are all things you can tune. But in general, for this whole tutorial, I'm just going to stick with with these settings. And then train again very very boilerplate training function here that just walks through different different batches of the the data set. It calculates how far off the prediction is from the the expected value, so from that from that training set. It does that in this case using a mean squared error that we've defined uh, down below. That basically takes the the difference between the predicted value with the current kind of model weights and the expected value, subtracts them, squares it, and then averages it over the over the batch of training samples. So that's that's really how it guides guides the network to learn is trying to reduce the amount of mean squared error loss here. So skipped over a couple things here. So we're just gonna save. We're gonna save the network weights and biases as NumPy files that we'll be able to import back in Bifrost. And then down here is just like the, the actual, what kicks off the training. So we've defined the directory where our current data is and then next we have our training hyperparameters so these again are values we can we can adjust and play with to, with to help the training process itself in this case we'll just we'll just leave these as is we load our data and then kick off kick off the training so we can start and just hit play here and see what happens and we actually ended up with an error, which uh, I expected because I'd done this before. And for some reason, the latest release of PyTorch isn't compatible with the latest release of NumPy. I don't know why this isn't fixed, uh, but I decided to leave it in because this is somewhat common <laughs> in machine learning, especially if you're like trying to use old, uh, old repositories from papers or things like that where it, there's a lot of dependencies so things can break off in this i think actually highlights the way we've gone about building the machine learning compounds is once you get your trained weights in bifrost there are no no more dependencies so you don't actually have to deal with numpy versioning and pytorch versioning all those things so to fix this particular error uh where they say modules compiled with numpy one and can't can't be run in NumPy 2. We're just going to install a specific version of NumPy, the, the, the last um, basically one, one dot release. So we'll go back to terminal and then run pip install NumPy equals 126.4. And then now if we run our code again, this should run uh, and actually start training. And it actually looks like we have this set up for CUDA, which is uh, more, more on a PC thing. I am on a Mac, which ha should have MPS, so uh, apologies for this, but I'll change this to MPS one more time. There we go. Okay, so we now loaded our data set, and the next thing we should see is every every epic, which is basically one, once through every, every single batch, we'll see what's called the loss. That's our, again, our mean squared error loss. So ideally we would see this kind of uh, dropping steadily as it's as the network is learning how to better predict the, the training set. A lot of different ways, uh, whole schools of thought around optimizing this and plotting, plotting your loss curve and things like that. I won't cover any of that here. We'll just let this train a little bit, but we have this set up to save every uh, 10 epics. So as you can see here, we're on Epic 20, and this is actually training relatively fast. We're only, only gonna do this for 50 epics. So if I actually go over to our, our folder here where we're saving our model data, uh, we already have a train weight. So we have wh whatever, uh, now whatever's saved at Epic 30 is now represented here. So we can actually start to import those into Bifrost and play around if we want, or we can, we can let this wait. So I sped, sped ahead just a little bit. So now that training's done, we can head over to Maya and deploy this, this newly trained model so that we can run our neural network inside of Bifrost and do our inverse kinematic solve there.
So to get everything hooked up in Maya so that we're actually calling our model, the first thing we're going to want to do is import the network network parameters we just saved during the learning process. And we can do this with the counterpart to the write NumPy node, which is the read NumPy node, which is, again, uh, something newly added. We're just making this whole process much simpler for us. And if we start, again, by searching for our training directory here in models v1 you'll see we have we have quite a few files so we're going to need to read do a read numpy on each one of these to get it into the graph there are ways we can make even this more procedural like automatically creating the names here in the loop i'm just going to kind of brute force this for now import each one of these and with a separate read numpy node and then uh, then we'll go from there so i'm going to kind of speed through, through that i'll probably probably time time lapse this bit and then we'll catch up after. Okay, so we now have all of our layer weights and biases loaded and our mean and standard deviation, which is gonna help us normalize the input to send into the network and then remove the normalization. Um, afterwards, so we can map it back to our our normal uh, degree space over here. Uh, the first thing I'll note is that part of the read NumPy node is a place where we can input the type. So weight matrices are two-dimensional arrays in most cases, whereas bias vectors are, as the name implies, a, a one-dimensional array. So we need to be careful that when we import our layer weights, we actually change the type from what is an array of floats to a array of array of floats. So next we're gonna create a new compound. Uh, that's where we're gonna do all of our IK solving. And inside this compound is where we're basically gonna reconstruct the neural network. That's gonna compute this solve for us. And the first thing we need to do is pass in all of these parameters along with the pivots and the relocation. All right, now that that's done, I caught a mistake, which is that we, we're not actually passing the pivots in. We don't, uh, we don't need those. What we want is our IK handle here. So we'll need to drop that in using this, this IK locator. And I'll reuse this pivots port here and then rename this to IK handle. And then before we actually construct the neural network, I want to do a bit of uh, transformation on the IK handle here, just to make sure we get it with respect to the root always. That way, if the root moves in, in world space, our solve still is relative to that. So popping in here for a bit, we can start with a matrix to SRT node connect our IK handle to that. We're gonna take the inverse of our root, and then we want a transform vector as position. And this is just gonna transform the position of the IK handle relative to the, uh, the root. Uh, so next we can actually reconstruct our neural network. So. If we go back to the training code here, essentially what we're going to do is create in compounds in the graph this setup here. So we have four linear layers with an activation after the first three. There's not an activation after after the output layer. So we're just going to reconstruct this with the new machine learning compounds in Bifrost. So back in Bifrost, we can just type in layer linear. This is the, uh, the new compounds with the machine learning pack that does the linear layer multiplication. If we pop in here, you'll notice that that is exactly the, the weighted sum from that, that original equation that I showed back in the introduction. And then we have, again, four layers. So I'll just copy these four times. 
And then we're using relu activation functions. And again, these are after the first three layers here, not the output layer. So we'll start by hooking, hooking these up here. And the last thing we need to do, if you recall, when we trained, we normalized all the features. So before they go into the network that we just created, we need to normalize them again using our input mean and standard deviation. And then after they come out of the network, we need to remove that normalization so they're back in, in the space we're, we're used to. And we can do that with a z-score normalize compound, which is another another new compound. The technique we used for normalization was called z-score normalize. So similar to when we assembled our input features for the training process, our uh, XYZ position coming out of this node here is a type of float three. We actually just need a flat array. So we're gonna create a new compound called assemble inputs. Pass in that XYZ location. And then from here, we're gonna do a vector three to scalar. and then a build array. We can pass this into our normalization compound here. That's going to be the input to our network. And then we're going to z-score denormalize at the end. And then lastly, we will connect all our weights and bias uh, parameters here along with our, our mean and standard deviation to, to get the network fully connected. And then the last thing we're gonna do is parse our network outputs to get our actual data values. So we'll do that by creating a new compound, call it compute thetas. Pass our output into that. And in this case, it's pretty straightforward. So the um, this is an array of three floats. The first one is theta one, second one's theta two, third one's theta three. So we can do that just with a get from array. Do three of these and then change the array index on the second two. Then we can pass those out to the top level of our graph. So now we have a node that solves, does our IK solve calling our neural network as opposed to, again, a, an analytic solver of some sort. So the last thing we need to do is just connect it to that forward kinematic solver we had before to do the actual transformation on, on the joints. So I can come up here to our XZZFK compound, copy and paste that. And then pass in theta one, theta two, theta three. We'll hide the visualization that we were using before on our sample. And turn the visualization on here. And then if I move this around, we should get some movement. And the graph editor. You can see we, we have movement and it's not great. This is actually uh, pretty common for your first pass through a network. So we can kind of take a look at this and start to debug it, see what's um, see what might be going on. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial.